This is Graham Grinner on All Channel. He started compiling stories and reports from out in the waste into what he calls the new histories. Tonight's broadcast is documenting the files and information RG was able to collect about the group in the northern region of the waste known as the Twin Town Militia. Most of these reports are from various groups that have come in contact with them, and I think there's even a few corporate documents that RG was able to get his hands on. So, here we go. The Twin Town Militia. The Twin Town Militia, or TTM, formed in the early years after the fall. When the feral threat spread further out from the region around the Gat, and following the bombs dropping, whatever remained of the military forces in the nearby regions gathered in a few small encampments in the northern barrens. These encampments eventually created lines of communication and were able to form a coalition, connecting their communities and forming a military state between the two towns housing the major populations. Thus, the Twin Town Militia was born. Early reports from settlements that refused to join under the militia's umbrella were taken by force or pressure to relocate. One such report is transcribed here. When the militia came, they promised all sorts of great things like defense, access to supplies, and any goods that may help us. Some families went along with it, but most of the camp felt uneasy about the idea. A lot of us had just fled the southern wastelands and the threat of extermination at the hands of the corporations, so the prospect of being under another group's rule didn't seem right. A few days later, a small squad of soldiers set up a perimeter around the camp and made the announcement that anyone willing to join up with the militia would be welcome to come with them. But anyone who didn't had to vacate or be deemed a threat and treated as such. We were given until sundown to leave, and even then it was with several soldiers escorting us to their new border. The Wastelander declined giving a name for that report, but there was a note that they were traveling with a caravan towards a new camp west of the rift. Rumors from caravans that engaged in trade with the militia, including a quick note from Aurora of Aurora's Fedoras, paints an interesting picture of life within the militia's fences. One caravan discussed meeting the commander of the main force within the northern town. General Daggers is a rigid man, with an unsettlingly calm demeanor, just barely concealing a tense rage. When a soldier approached him regarding a security concern, the way he snapped at the man gave a clear impression that his aggression can be explosive when things really go wrong. The general is also a religious man, as he produced an old-world Bible from his jacket, which sat on the table for the duration of our discussion. When we departed, he wished us a good day with a blessing from God, which felt out of place in our travels up to this point. I've added the note from Aurora as well to the file. For the most part, the soldiers are pretty easy to work with when they come by, and are pushy about the other wastelanders seen in the outpost. But one does tend to overhear conversations here and there. Not all the militia seem to follow General Dagger's beliefs, but have to keep that close to the chest or find themselves in front of a court-martial, or worse yet, a firing squad. From the sound of things, the general has been especially zealous lately, to the point of fanaticism, claiming the militia will cleanse the wastes of sin. Scary shit. A more recent report picked up from a creep corpse just outside the militia borders details what they discovered about the southern camp. Fences are electrified. No sign of external generators. Power supply must be within the town. Twenty-five guards spotted along one click stretch of fences with three daily rotations. Standard old-world weaponry, rifles, handguns. Observed for three days. No entrances at main gate. No word on northern gate. Agent C-4370, presumed missing or dead, as radio silence was not in mission parameters. It's assumed that the Twin Town Militia has intentions on expanding their territory in all directions, as rumors of caravans and traveling wastelanders being deterred from taking specific roads close to the borders have increased in recent months. The historian was also able to patch into a corporate signal and captured a segment from one of their broadcasts with accompanying notes. From Trial, we have received news at the tower that they have come to a tenuous accord with the group known as the Twin Town Militia. It appears a small cell of soldiers within the militia are interested in trading with Trail's agents, provided they have access to the nearest recreational center. This accord has provided a valuable source of organic fruits and vegetables to the agents there, ever since the militia's takeover of an outpost housing members from the community known as the farm. We here at the tower want to congratulate our sister cities and wish them a safe day. It is believed that with the capture of the farmer's settlement and recent treaty with corporate agents from Triel, 
that the Twin Town Militia intends on utilizing corporate facilities and potentially tech to help them tighten their chokehold on the neighboring regions and force them to join the regime. Well, that's it for this episode of the New Histories. As usual, I'll be sending the recording to this broadcast on loop through a secondary frequency for all to hear. This has been Grim Grinner on all channels. See you in the waste. Welcome to The Waste is a Wasteland podcast brought to you by Edward Grimm Grinner Hutchinson. Feel free to follow me on all social media and make sure to subscribe so you can hear new episodes as they release. If you like what I do here and want to support the podcast by getting some cool merch, check out my Etsy store. For more information and all the links, check out linktree.com slash welcome to the wastes. Thanks for listening.